Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today's video I am filming all about how to start a podcast. You can think of this as like podcasting 101. I have done a video like this a few years ago. It was in 2020, so it has been, or was it 2021? I don't know, it's been a really long time and at that point I was a podcast newbie and I feel like I have years of experience under my belt now so some of the tips are probably going to be the same as the past video but I've learned a lot more and the podcasting landscape has changed a lot so I am very excited to be filming this video because so many people are starting a podcast. It's like a running joke that everyone has a podcast now, like everyone and their mother has a podcast. And while I don't disagree with that, I do think it's true. I also think that there is still room for podcasters and podcasts in the space. If there is anything that you guys should know about me, it's that I firmly believe that social media, podcasts, whatever you want to, to call it, is not oversaturated. I think there's so much room for opportunity, there's so much room for growth, and there is space for new people in social media. So if you are thinking that you wanna start a podcast but you don't want to because everyone has a podcast, People have been saying that for years. Five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, people have been telling me that the podcasting space, the social media space, more social media specifically, has been oversaturated. People listen to that, then we wouldn't have the rising stars that we have today. There are so many people that started in the past few years. There's so many influencers that have started in the past few years. And if they were to listen to oh, it's oversaturated, they would have never become these like mega famous people that they are now. If you even look at like the Forbes top creator list from last year, so many of those people started in the past three years. You don't even have to make it to that list to be successful. You can be a very middle of the pack creator, podcaster, whatever it is, and still make it a career or make it a successful side hustle or just use it as a creative outlet to express yourself. So if you think that it's oversaturated, don't. There's still room for you, but you do have to stand out a little bit. So this YouTube video is all about how to start a podcast in 2024 and how to actually stand out and grow your podcast, because I think that's the challenge now. Anyone can hop on a mic, hop on voice memo on their phone and literally start a podcast. It is that easy but it is not that easy to have a successful podcast. So a little bit more context about who I am and why am I credible? I started my podcast in 2019. At the time, it was also when everyone was starting a podcast and people were telling me not to do it because everyone has a podcast. And I am so glad I didn't listen to them because now podcasting is one of my very favorite things to do. I'm still having so much fun with it and it honestly is getting better like year over year. And I'm just like a finding a new way to express myself and as a creative outlet. And it's also become a pretty good stream of income for me as well. I've been doing this for almost five years. It's gonna be five years in May, which is just crazy because sometimes I feel like I just started my podcast. I also have never missed a week unintentionally. Think only two where I purposely skipped an episode. I also have a couple million downloads on my podcast. I don't know the exact number because I've switched hosts so many times and those stats don't carry over, but I know I've hit like the two million mark and then I don't really know after that what number it is. So yeah, I have a couple million <laughs> floating around. And I've also had amazing, amazing guests on my podcast. And I think that they've all been so incredible. But I have literally gotten to interview some of the people that I have looked up to for years. I've gotten to connect with a lot of you on my solo episodes, which I have been doing so much more of lately. And it just makes me so happy that you guys like them. So that's a little bit of context about me. And now I want to give you guys some stats because I think that it's important to know the landscape of podcasting before we dive into it. There are over 450 million podcast listeners out there today. Not only does everyone have a podcast, but everyone listens to podcasts. Average American that listens to podcasts listens to eight podcast episodes a week. There's over 5 million podcasts globally, and I don't think that number should scare you because 90% of podcasts don't make it past episode three. And if you have more than 25 to 30 downloads, per episode, which is not that many, <laughs> I can tell you that, you are already in the top 50%. You are better than half of the podcasts out there. While yes, there's a lot of noise in the space, that is just what it is, it's just noise. You have the potential to grow a successful podcast no matter who you are, and whether it's a creative outlet, side hustle, or a career, I truly believe that you can do it. 
if you follow these tips. And before we jump into today's video, I did want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you didn't know what Squarespace does, they are the best online website builder. And if you're thinking about having a podcast, you should consider a website for SEO purposes and to extend show notes and to collect email lists. There's so many reasons why your podcast can have a website. So definitely do it with Squarespace. Squarespace is the best, most customizable website builder. And trust me, I have used other ones before and I always go back to Squarespace. People ask me sometimes if I genuinely recommend Squarespace and the answer is yes. My startup's website is built on Squarespace so if I didn't that would be a big risk of mine to put like my baby on something that I didn't actually like. Squarespace is the most customizable. They have the most beautiful templates. And when you are someone like me, which is a business owner, a content creator, wearing many hats, you need something that's gonna be quick and efficient and also beautiful and professional. And that is exactly what Squarespace is and what they do. If you want to check it out, you can get 10% off using my code NatalieBarboo or go to squarespace.com slash NatalieBarboo. Now let's get back to the video. So the first thing you need to do when you're thinking about starting a podcast is finding a format or a topic that you want to talk about or you want to do every single week. The reason I say pick something that you can talk about is because I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm interested in XYZ. Oh, I really want to interview insert group of people, but they don't think of it as long term. So yeah, that might work for a month, two months, three months, but are you able to sustain that topic or that format in the long term? Let's say you are someone who you say you want to interview people in the makeup industry. That's your podcast. It's interviewing makeup artists. I hope you know or can reach out to 52 makeup artists every single year because that's what it's going to take to sustain that type of podcast. You could change it up and say you want to just talk about makeup and that way you can integrate solo episodes. You can talk about your opinion while you build up a clientele. I think that's totally different. But Make sure that whatever you decide on, you can sustain for a long period of time because podcasting is a long game. When I started my podcast, I knew I wanted to interview guests and the type of guests I wanted to interview were friends, entrepreneurs, content creators. Those were kind of like the top three genres that I wanted to hit and really it was anyone that inspired me and that I wanted to get the behind the scenes of the highlight reel which is why I named it the real reel. I wanted to give my friends a platform even if they didn't have a following to be able to share their stories because they inspired me and pull back the lid of like the real real version of what my friends are going through. Let's talk about it besides the stuff that you post on social media. Same goes with content creators and founders and CEOs. I wanted to be able to talk about the behind the scenes of what their daily life looks like. Like, and so that's where I got the idea for my topic. Now it's still relatively the same, but I have been able to switch it to also behind the highlight reel of my personal life and integrate a lot of solo episodes into that. Make sure that you, whatever you decide to touch on, you can talk about for a extended period of time and determine the format. So are you interviewing guests? Are you doing solo episodes? Are you doing a mix of both? Are you taking listener calls? Are you reading things off of Reddit? Like the, am I the asshole type of podcasts that are coming out now? What is your format? That is also going to help you set the groundwork of your podcast. So people know what the heck they're tuning into every single week. Also, is there a unique angle of the topic or format that you're doing? If you want to talk about sports and you want to interview athletes, do you have uh, access to athletes? Do you work in that field already or are you just a fan? Either one works, but make sure that you pick your angle so that you know exactly how you're going to sustain this and why you are someone that people would want to listen to. Number two, make sure you show your personality. It brings me to what I said about how I do solo episodes where I ramble for 45 minutes. I think people come back to my podcast because they now like my personality and it doesn't necessarily matter as much about the subject I'm talking about. They just want to come back because they want to hear what I have to say week over week, which is the coolest point to get to. And I'm so grateful for that. But in order to do that, you need to show your personality. People don't tune into podcasts because it's like, a news show and they just want to like learn the information. If you think about like the true crime podcasts that are out there, the first one that comes to mind is Morbid. I love those two girls. Or if you think about Crime Junkie and you think about Ash and Britt, 
people like their personalities just as much as they like the stories that they're tuning into. If I wanted to just watch, read someone tell me the facts about a case or the facts about a crime, there's probably plenty of resources out there where I could read an article or have it transcribed to me. It's not that. It's because I like them, the hosts, as people. So if they did an episode that was a little off topic, you probably would still tune in. And so that's why you have to show your personality and not be scared of it. And the good thing about podcasting is that you are in full control. So don't feel like you need to be prim and proper like a news show or a newscast. You can totally be yourself. And nowadays, it is really hard to make a specific topic very unique. I can only talk so much about, you know, building a business and being a content creator. The information I'm telling you is out there already. This video, for example, you can find this information somewhere else, but I believe that a lot of you tune in because you like the way that I word things, you like the way that I say things, you like me as a person, and that's why you're tuning in. Or at least that's why you've stuck around this long is because there is something about my delivery that you are enjoying. I hope. Some good examples of podcasts that do that is Giggly Squad, Hannah Burner, and Paige DeSorbo. Absolute favorite podcasts. Like, that podcast is so funny. There's Gals on the Go with Danielle and Brooke. There's What We Said podcast with JC Marie and Chelsea. And all of those don't really talk about anything specific, if I'm being honest. It's just kind of the two hosts riffing with each other and talking to each other about random topics that they decide on that week. It's nothing specific. If you ask me what is the What We Said podcast about, I have no clue. Or if you want to talk about solo podcast hosts, there's Alex Earl, there's Emma Chamberlain, there's Shannon Ford. There's so many podcasters. They become successful because people like them and tune in to hear what they have to say, not necessarily because of the topic that is at hand. The third thing is to commit to a schedule. Like I said, 90% of podcasts don't make it past three episodes, which is so crazy, but not surprising in the slightest because people don't commit to things and they think things are a lot easier than they are. If you think back to your favorite podcast, do you know what day they go live? Because I do. I know that when I open my podcast app at that day or that time, I am going to find my shows and I'm going to click them and I'm going to have a great day. There's nothing more disappointing when you're like, oh, I can't wait for the new episode and you open it and it's not there. So stick to a schedule, not only for your sake with just being consistent um, and like flexing that content muscle, but also for your audience sake, because your audience is not going to stick around if they have no clue when you upload. Podcasting is a habit for a lot of people. And so you want to make sure that you become one of their habits that they listen to you every single week. And the only way that they can do that is if you are consistent. I would recommend at the beginning though, if you don't know what your schedule is gonna be like, you don't know how consistent you can be, you can batch podcast episodes. So pick one day a month where you do all four episodes and then you just schedule them out. Or if there are certain seasons in your life where you're busier than others, you can have seasons for podcasts. I know a lot of podcasters that will take one, two, three month breaks and then come back for season two. And at least that way they're informing their guests about it. It's it's not necessarily bad if you cannot post 52 times a year. It gets bad when your audience has no idea when to expect you. So at least if it's seasonal, they know, okay, spring and summer come around, I know I'm gonna listen to that podcast. The fourth one is to market your podcast. Unfortunately, unlike TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, the algorithm for podcasts is not there. The number one and number two way that people find new podcasts is word of mouth and social media. Besides just like top charts, which is only for people that are successful, to find new podcasts, word of mouth and social media. So you wanna make sure that you have a social media presence and that you are marketing yourself. If you are a podcast, you should have an Instagram account, a TikTok account, and a YouTube account specifically for YouTube shorts and also long form content if you're uploading it on there. I think Gen Z actually finds their podcasts the most through YouTube. So. Podcasting is moving towards video. That's why I started posting my podcast on video. I hated making that move. The joy of podcasting for me for so long was being able to like not get ready and like not put my makeup on and not have to, you know, get my camera out and I could just kind of like lay and talk on the mic. And now I'm like, oh my God, it's just a YouTube video with more work. However, I've learned to love it, but it took me a long time because that's annoying. But that's the way the podcast world is going, and so I am sure that the episode number of people giving up after three podcasts is gonna go significantly down, where it's people are gonna be giving up after one podcast, because it is a lot of work, but it is definitely worth it. So make sure that you are marketing it so that your work doesn't go unnoticed. Make sure you have social media presence, post your new podcast episodes when they go live, post the link, all of that, but also 
get short form clips and post those throughout the week because you never know which one is going to go viral. And the algorithm for TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels is a lot easier to grow on than the Spotify podcast algorithm or the Apple podcast 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 algorithm if there even is one i feel like it's so hard to discover new podcasts through the apps directly i always just have to like hear about it from a friend or see it on social so make sure that you have a strong digital presence there and that is something eventually that you can outsource um you can definitely find someone on like a freelance website you gotta have it because if you just upload your podcast on spotify and apple and then you're like okay i uploaded a podcast you're gonna hear crickets it needs to be somewhere else today in order to grow. Whereas a few years ago, it was fine to just kind of upload a story and be like, new podcast episode just dropped. But nowadays, there's there should be visuals with it. Uh, even if you're not filming your podcast, at least like the audio clip with like a video with the transcription or something. There's gotta be something more than just you uploading it on Spotify and Apple. Another way to market your podcast though is to ask your guests to make sure that they repost your podcast when it goes out. Majority of guests do that already. They don't have to be asked, but it's always it's totally fine to give the guest a little nudge and be like, hey, your podcast episode went out. Love it if you share it on your story. I haven't ever had anyone say no to that. I feel like that's kind of expected. And then another way you can market it is by asking other podcasts if you can be a guest on their show. I have found so many podcasts because the hosts have swapped and then I've learned about their podcast and fell in love with them. And then number five, make sure that you have good equipment. Because podcast is mainly audio, you don't want someone to turn off your podcast because they can't stand listening to it. If it's like a Zoom recording, if it's a bad mic, sure, sometimes people will listen, but you're gonna get a lot of people that fall off because your podcast audio has to be crisp. I'm gonna have a link of microphones and uh, equipment that I would recommend down below instead of going over it here, but it doesn't have to be expensive. You can totally find something for even less than $100 to just get started. In terms of video equipment, you can use a camera, you can use your phone, I've used my phone for plenty of videos and it's been totally fine. So podcasting is a relatively inexpensive way to get started. And then when you're recording virtually, I would avoid using Zoom because the audio quality is pretty bad. And I would use something that records locally. So something like Zencaster or Riverside, which I will also have linked below. That is the easiest thing that you can improve on. I think the hardest thing is actually like having a good podcast with like things people want to listen to. So those are my tips on how to start a podcast. If you guys have listened to my podcast, let me know. Give me feedback you have for mine. I hope that you guys are enjoying it. And if you have a podcast, link it down below or comment it down below because I'm always looking for new recs. Like I said, it's really hard to find. And I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode or episode. I'm in podcasting mode. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My camera's going to die any second now. Um, but this was a really fun video to film. I hope it helped. And I hope that this encouraged you to start and didn't discourage you like a lot of other videos I've seen that just talk about how saturated the space is because I don't believe it is. And I believe you have the power to stand out as well. So yeah, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.